Good morning. Uh, welcome to Morning Moments. Thank you for joining us today, whatever platform you're watching this and whenever you're watching this. Today, I have uh, somebody that's multi-talented, has a lot of history of, of things that she's done, but she wants to be referred to as a prophet. Uh, and there's a special ministry for people who have a ministry of prophecy, and she'll tell you about that. Nicole Swole, welcome to Morning Moments. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Thank you for having me. What do you do and uh, why do you do it? Oh, that is a big question, Andy. Um, so I speak from God's heart. Um, I know that sounds pretty simple, but uh, living in the body of truth is not as simple and as easy. Um, so if I could jump right in and say that uh, I grew up um in poverty i grew up uh, poverty stricken i'm from the island of jamaican um you know i went through some tough experience and tough life right i have um been in the victim seat of um child abuse um rape child sexual abuse um several things that i think a lot of your lis listeners can probably relate to and, you know, why I feel that I am uh, living from the heart of God um, as something that I always say this, I have a responsibility to be, not to have, but to be. And that's what I try to do every day is to be the image of God. So I believe that God is operating through me. So I think my purpose within the earth is to be a vessel for that through me experience. So while I've gone through the um, victimization as a child of verbal, physical, sexual abuse, I thought that life couldn't get any worse for me, Andy, honestly. Um, but life, honestly, life happens to all of us, right? life happens to me just as it's happening to you right and as I go through these traumatic experiences um I wasn't sure where to go you know I talk about it all the time that I grew up under my mother's salvation meaning I went to church just because my mom said I should go to church or you know I understand who God was because my mom said you know this is who God is but I, Andy, I never had a relationship with God. So I went through these painful experience and felt as if I was alone. And I'm speaking from that seat before I speak from the seat of joy. I really felt as if I was alone. So I was bitter and angry and something that I see hit in the world today, suicidal. I was very suicidal as a young lady. So I was a victim. I became a victim to not just abuse, but to um, trauma, uh, because the enemy has a way to continue to make you feel pain and hurt if that's going to keep you in bondage of anger and, you know, unforgiveness and all those things. But truth be told, I was so young, I didn't know what to do with that, right? So as I grew older and after you know, many attempts at suicide and, and, and different thing. And again, I didn't have a relationship with God. So I didn't know at that time that God was saving me. I, you know, migrated to the States and finally reunited with my mom. And I really thought that life was going to be better for me. I mean, things that started to look bright you know, I started to get an education and, you know, go to school and have, you know, job and things seems great. But I couldn't overcome because I was still a victim. So everything in my past was bleeding over into my future. The unforgiveness, the um, inability to have solid relationships was now bleeding over into my future, Andy. So I realized that something had to change. The first trauma that hit me as an adult 
I was not able to withstand. So what did I do? I turned to what I was accustomed to was the checkout. And I think we see it a lot today. Um, I know I don't want to sit on the subject of suicide, but it's such a big thing. Um, and I think there are people who are probably watching your show right now who have been down that path and has contemplated, you know, that feeling that you don't have a purpose. Everyone is better than better off more than you, you know, um, they're better without you. If you go, then everything will change. Everything will stop. You know, that feeling again, remember I said, I'm living now to be and living in purpose. So I didn't get there overnight. But God had a different plan for me. So I got in my car and I begin to drive with this feeling of this is it. This is where it ends. And God made a huge U-turn in my life, I tell you. In two weeks, my life changed drastically. It's almost like God yanked me from the back of my shirt and sit me into the appropriate seat. And he does that. So I met, um, I had a friend for years and I ran into him again. He was a pastor of a church. He brought me to Christ. I began to learn who Christ was. I got baptized. I was 30 years old and just now having my relationship with God. And Andy, in two weeks, I was able to purge. And I know I'm just going fast track into this because it's, I really want to talk more about what what the trauma has brought but where I'm at today right so fast track I begin to purge and in two weeks the Lord delivered me from the victim seat of child abuse where I was able to write a book Abby's Secret Abyss in two weeks I know that's the power of God you know God said something to me one day he said to me, because uh, I said, God, how do I know that you're directing me? And he said, and I said, how do I know that these thoughts are yours? And he said, you're not that smart. <laughs> so Andy, I'm telling you, when I wrote that book in two weeks, there's nothing that could tell me that wasn't God. So I would love to, I tell you that part of the story before your next question, because I would love to say that I'm an author, I'm, I'm a chancellor, I'm a prophet, I'm all these things. But truth be told, it is the experiences that I've had in life and God pulling me out of those experiences has somewhat placed titles on those situations. So I really just believe that I am a vessel. You know, from a victim to a vessel, that sounds like a Good name for a book, oh, but uh, uh, when when you're would you allow your past to classify you and to label you instead of what God sees you at, you can't grow. And mm -hmm. when you see that God is just He sees He He sees He He's beyond our past, beyond our hurt, because God's not right, done writing our story yet, and He holds the pen. And he's and so let him write the story. Yes, yes, agree. Okay. Something that hit me, and if, I hope you don't mind me saying this, but but when you said it, I felt the Holy Spirit speaking to me about this. You, you said you are to just be, hmm. just be. Well, hmm. you know, Acts tells us not to to witness; it tells us to be a witness. Oh. Hmm. We don't go to church to feel better. We go to church to be better mm. because it's not about our feelings anyway. Yes. God wants us to be who he's called us to be. My God, that is so true. You know, when the Lord gave me the revelation that faith is not to have, it's to be. That's confirmation also of exactly what you're saying and that scripture in Acts. It is that we are, every time you see in scripture where God begins to tell us how we should act, it's to be the salt of the earth, right? 
is to be the light of this world. It's to, for us to be the image of God. We're beings, right? So be is a continuation. Um, I think most of the time I was ending my life because I was, I was trying to end my life because I was thinking that I was not a being, you know? That ING is so important to who I am today is to continue to allow God to use me. Um, and, you know, as I went from victim to vessel, which is a really a victim to a survivor, I begin to realize that the weakness in me is what God needed in order for him to be strong. The weaker that I am, the stronger that God is in me. The scripture says where, he, where I'm weak, he's strong, right? So I begin to accept those flaws and those things that I was going through because I begin to become aware of the power of God in me. Because the worse the situation was, it's the more that I begin to see that there's no way I could have overcome that on my own. So I went through... Um, child abuse and thought that that was it I, I wrote a book on surviving it on the importance of verbalizing and speaking my truth because the other part was I was in bondage from this secrecy I would not say that I had gone through these experiences I would not say what people had done to me but the Holy Spirit said to me one day you know if they didn't want you to tell they wouldn't have given you that secret to keep anyway right? So they wouldn't have done it. So I lost the fear of speaking about this so that someone else could overcome. And I watch 80 year old women um, through my story of overcoming and speaking out overcame at 80 years old from what they had gone through as a child. You know, women that were in the media as a child and they just get lost and shut away after that. Um, so I went through that. I survived. I became a survivor. One of the first anti-child abuse activist coach in New Jersey. I began to coach other women who had gone through child abuse and um, realized that I had, you know, a anointing on my life to minister and pour into people. I, I hope things that Nicole has said has just stirred your interest so that you could find out more about her, check out her book, check out her websites and her things that she's doing, her speaking engagements. She may be in an area uh, close to you that, that you could hear her speak, uh, or maybe you want to have her at your event, have her at your church. Uh, uh, please check these things out and find out more about how God has she her she she just took to the tip of the iceberg of her story and you need to you need to hear that please pursue that and find out more about her as we close today i want you to take the time and, and pray for nicole matter of fact take the time as soon as this interview is over and stop and pray specifically for her and her ministry you know, she needs your prayers and you need the practice. So pray that God would use her and bless her in a great and mighty way. Uh, Nicole, thank you for being on Morning Moments this, today. You are welcome. And thank you so much for having me. God bless you and bless your ministry always, Andy. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Please pass this message on to other people and keep coming back, if you would, for some more morning moments.